Good evening. Welcome to Selectman's Roundtable. I'm Moira Miller, and joining me this evening are my colleagues on the Board of Selectmen, Jim Kane and Beth Casavant. And uh, our other colleagues, John LeBeau and Mo DePaulo, were unable to uh, join us this evening. Uh, but uh, we are pleased to be here. Uh, as you can probably tell, we're not in the studio. Uh, we are at Shrewsbury Appliance Center, which is located um, on Route 9 in Shrewsbury. And shortly, we're going to talk a little bit here about uh, a little bit of town business. And then we're going to introduce uh, Steve Maynard, who is the owner. I'll have a little conversation with him and, and tell you a little bit about this great business here in Shrewsbury. So um, so let's, uh, let's kind of open it up. I guess uh, we're full swing in fall. Although Mother sure Nature are. doesn't hasn't gotten the word, it's, it's still warm and uh, Very humid, humid out. out. Yes, yes. It's not a good hair day. No, it's not no. good. So, um, <laughs> so we apologize for our hair, don't we, Jim? Things that yes. you <laughs> Yes, exactly. Uh, but uh, but fall for us means sort of the the prep work, the beginning stages of the budget season. Um, you know, our new town manager Kevin Mizakar is working towards um, preparing what will be his first budget for the town of Shrewsbury, submitting that by the end of the year. So um, that kind. Kind of um, is where uh, primarily where a lot of our focus is. Um, we also have Beale School project. Maybe yes, Jimmy, the, you want sure, to give folks sure. an update on what's happening with the Beale? The uh, building committee has been meeting uh, regularly and now more regularly since, well, I think six months ago or so. We went through all the process that you need to go through with the uh, Mass School Building Authority to secure an owner's project representative and then an architect for the project. Now that that is done, uh, we're full swing into evaluating a variety of sites around town. I think we started with 31 possible sites. Now that was basically an evaluation of what's open or what have people offered as concepts for different locations. Uh, of those 31, frankly, it quickly came down to maybe 9 or 12. Mm. And I think we're down now to around 6 that we're actually exploring. Uh, we'll start uh, a series of meetings in early November now that the architect um, is evaluating a specific uh, variety of locations for the, the bigger details. For example, uh, one of the sites that we're looking at because there's so much open, rel relatively flat land is the land between Main Street and North Quinsig. The Postal Service is mm -hmm. obviously mm -hmm. there, but they have a ton of open space putting to the side how you acquire land from the federal government, but is should that even be considered as a space? We've looked at a variety of other parcels. There's a 12-acre piece down on Walnut Street, way down on Walnut Street, mm -hmm. almost into Westboro. Why would you want to build a school there? Mm -hmm. Very narrow, windy country road. Didn't seem to be a fit. So those six uh, locations are available on the website, and we encourage people to take a look at them in case as a kid you, you knew something about the land that we don't know, or if somebody mm -hmm. has a has a great idea of another location. Obviously, we prefer to use town-owned property because it doesn't cost anything to acquire. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Mass School Building Authority does not assist you with uh, acquisition. Mm -hmm. And in terms of site prep, they cap that at a relatively no low number as well. So if you were to acquire a parcel of land that had a building on it, it would be on the town to demo it mm -hmm. beyond a mm -hmm. certain number. And then when you're into a structure, you always have to be worried about what hazardous materials could be there given the age of the structure. Um, so there's a whole host of those issues which the architect uh, team is now pushing its way through. Um, and we'll then meet again on uh, November 2nd and then pretty quickly after that. Um, concurrently with that, once the evaluation of Beale School itself starts, we'll float an, uh, an idea to the <coughs> Board of Selectmen for possible reuse. Yeah. Uh, a reuse committee because I think if you're going to ask people to leave a site and it is a critical site much like the library in my opinion was a critical site downtown at a critical corner Neal School is at a critical location in town so if you're going to ask people to spend money on a new school I think the second half of that question is well what are you going to do with that site right. people need to know a direction I think um, in which we could possibly go pending the final uh, analysis clearly the it doesn't strike anyone that the uh, the building is large enough or the site is large enough. Now you could go and acquire other properties, I suppose, but if you're gonna build a 700 student school, do you really want that downtown? Right. Mm -hmm. You can't get through downtown no, today with just the Beale School buses right. and the high school buses, et cetera. So I think that's part of that conversation as well. So uh, I would encourage people to go on the website and check our meeting schedule November 2nd, as I recall, is our next yes. meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and that'll be a public hearing. Then the 
following meeting will be at Beale School. Um, again, a public hearing. We're trying to initiate much more of a free flow, um, open meeting sense uh, mm -hmm. so people can participate and offer up what they have. Now, concurrent to that, the school committee is working right. down its own mm -hmm. schedule on uh, the decision uh, from their end on whether it should be a K to four school or a K to one. I know from the public meetings, um, the, the superintendent has indicated the, the survey they got back is rather strong, I would say overwhelmingly in favor of a K to four system. Mm. So they're wrestling with that as we're looking at the more technical sides of the, of the site. Um, and then once we understand where we are going or likely to be going, we should get that uh, reuse committee up and running as well. Oh, sorry. No, so no, any, no, any of these sites um, will obviously, um, regardless of what the school committee's decision might be on the K to one, K to four, these are all sites that it's been deemed would be appropriate. Um, I, either of those options would fit in terms of. Well, I'm not so sure they would, to be honest oh, with you, okay. as one member of the committee. Okay. Oh, you're so gonna, that's you, something you're still Yeah, that's, that's part okay. of the reason okay. it's still six, because if you're going to do a K to one school that's for the entire time, mm. town, I would argue it should be, re if not centrally located, mm -hmm. then certainly on a easy northwest, east, uh, sorry, excuse me, north, mm -hmm. south, east, west mm -hmm. corridor for mm -hmm. access. Yeah. Um, K to four, I think, makes it a little easier, but still, um, you're trying to avoid the cost of acquisition, the cost of demo. So I guess you would argue right now we're in a technical review of wetlands and mm. other such things, uh, but at the same point seeking to avoid costs of acquisition, to avoid a cost of demolition. We'll see if we can pull that off or not. And then if we, do, I anticipate we'll offer up two or three sites from my review of them as we go forward. We don't have to offer up one. I think we should probably mm. continue to play down the options of one or two or three depending from my own review, we'll see what comes out at these next two meetings, mm -hmm. and then off we go to the races. Now, yeah. by the time this show airs, the school committee will have already made their decision because isn't that happening tomorrow night, the 25th? On K oh, okay. In my advanced age, I'm losing track I think of the so. day, but yeah, yes, you're tomorrow. correct. Yes, 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 yes you're right. Okay, thank so. you. So, the mystery yeah. will be solved by the time people watch this. Yes, mm -hmm. all right, okay, unless it gets on tonight. Well, well, I mean, better I, hurry. and that just shows you know, I mean, uh, how complex. Uh, these decisions and these projects yeah. are it's not just as simple as gee we need a new school or do we need a new school or whatever um, th there's just a lot of um, a thought process and work that goes there into is. it so um, as always you know very grateful to the, the committee and um, the, the volunteers who want to, group, really to serve um, it's a big commitment so well. and we're lucky to have uh, the same OPM and the same architect yes. as the, the last as few the projects library, they know right. the town it yeah. was, it was it, sure. I think it was important to start with the broad brush of potential locations, but I think everyone who had been involved in this knew of the 31, you're quickly down to yeah, 8 or 9 right, or 10, because right. it's not as if we haven't evaluated parcels for a fire station or for a school Library, in the past few years. Library, other things, so, yeah, yeah. We'll keep moving that along. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Okay. Anything else going on that we want to... Great football year. Yeah. It has been if a great... you have a chance yes, to get out Friday night right. at uh, the high Is school the for Neshoba. Yeah. yeah. It's been good. Great to watch. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, as, as, uh, other teams too. I mean, there's a lot going on. I think yeah, the girls' volleyball team has, has been having a very good year. Uh, yep. You know, um, I hate to go there because we don't want to slight any teams that are having you know exactly. good years. But, right. but I think the general. cheerleading team just won something also. Did they? The okay, mm -hmm. okay. You know, sorry. You try to keep up with the Twitter feeds. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like but, a lot of talented um, athletes. But and always, Patrick's yeah. team is in the playoff. A little selfish. Awesome. Play. Okay. There we go. A little fall ball playoff. What's the name of that team? I have no idea. Oh, it's okay. called the Outlaws. No, the Outlaws. That's good. And of course, we drive by Dean Park to go play in Holden, which is always more convenient. But yeah, <laughs> right. Most yeah, of the yeah, right. Yeah, side, exactly. So like exactly. A little selfish um, plug. Yeah. So, um, so we have, you know, we that's have it. continue to have a lot of projects, uh, work projects going on around town. Uh, Route 20, the state, um, beginning to work there um, mm -hmm. on, on fixing that intersection um, where the, the ramp from Wegmans um, comes into Route 20. Uh, that work has begun and yeah. will will kind of go on hiatus for the winter and then come back. Um, I know I'm looking forward to that because that intersection is just terrible. Um, oh, we had the grand opening uh, of uh, Lakeway, Lakeway Commons. Commons. Yeah. That was did. awesome. Uh, I'm very, very uh, well done, well attended, and uh, exciting to uh, to finally kick that off. Talk about a project that um, you know uh, we we longed for, if you will, yeah. for somebody to come along and do that. And uh, and it's it's just met uh, expectations. It's great to have it now there and available. And and my understanding is Wegmans, not Wegmans, pardon me, Whole Foods, um, Whole Foods will open. 
um, sometime in January, February, yes. somewhere. Oh, like really? So. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I'll tell you, I'm, I learned about so many people who've never, who I didn't know, worked at Spags, but came yes. out with the yeah. unveiling. Yeah, that right. And that great plaque, piece. yeah, the amazing. Plaque was yeah, amazing. The, it yes. tells such a story. Great connection. If you it get really a chance is. to see it, yeah, you go down and see the beautiful um, plaque. Uh, it is not just a plaque. You know, you think in your mind, plaque. It is a, a, a work of art, almost yeah. like a. Um, um, what do you call it? Uh, um, Reminds me of a storyboard. Almost. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. But it's, you know, it's, it's three dimensional. Three dimensional. Yeah. Flat. Collage of Collage. images. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's great. Great. Okay. So. Um, so I think maybe it's time to. Uh, we'll call. We'll take a. Oh, I'm sorry. We're, um, our producer Mark Sarah tells me we're, we're going to take a break, and when we return, <laughs> we'll have Steve Maynard here with us to uh, talk a little bit about the business. So we are back, and as promised, uh, we have uh, Steve Maynard, who is the owner of Shrewsbury Center Appliances, with us. Uh, again, I think as you can see by the backdrop, hopefully, um, is that we are sitting here at his business, which is located at 276 Boston Turnpike here in Shrewsbury. And uh, so, Steve, thank you so much for having us here, um, putting up with us for... <laughs> thank you for coming down. I appreciate it. It's thank like you. Ms. Roundtable. So, thank you. you know, maybe we'll just start. Tell us a little bit about, uh, maybe about yourself and then sure. uh, the business and, you sure. know, things that you'd like folks to know about. Um, okay. So I moved, uh, my family, the Maynard family, uh, is from Shrewsbury their whole lives. I moved to Shrewsbury in fourth grade. So started at Spring Street, been in Shrewsbury ever since. I am married and we're raising our kids here as well. That's awesome. I have one daughter that goes to... Uh, Parker Road Preschool, mm -hmm. the other daughter that goes uh, to uh, Patton, and um, we opened this business. My, my background is service, and we opened the uh, retail side of the business um, roughly about 22 months ago, so a little oh, under two okay. years, okay. but uh, and um, things are going well. That's awesome, and we should just point out to folks too, if you're not the too familiar with the address I just threw out. You guys are located right next to Papa's Hardware. Yep. The people in, yep. the, in that exact same building. So. Absolutely. Sometimes uh, with the signage out there, because yeah. we're only allowed so much, uh, yep. people drive by. But yes, right next to Trippies, right where Papa's Hardware is, right yep. on the road. Two landmarks, so, so they'll yep. find you. Absolutely. They'll find if you. you're from Shrewsbury, you're going to know. Why you know, appliances? You said service. You were in the service so business. My, so so uh, it, it was a natural progression. I would go to customers and you know go to fix their units, and if they couldn't be fixed, they wanted to buy from me. Uh -huh but I wasn't a dealer, so I'd have to send them elsewhere. So what happened was I was doing business for other companies that sold the appliances when a light bulb finally went off and said, well, why aren't you selling them? So um, we are a licensed Whirlpool dealer, which gives us Whirlpool, mm -hmm. Maytag, Amana, KitchenAid, uh, and a licensed GE dealer, which is GE, GE Profiling Cafe, as well as a, an American brand, Speed Queen, which specializes in laundry. Um, so we're, we're licensed dealers for them, and we can. We're actually in a, a national buying group called Brand Source, which allows us to compete with all the box stores. They actually control the costs of our products, so we can compete with the box stores as well. Oh, really? Um, yeah. So we can offer the best prices in the area compared to any other small local business, as well as even the depots up the street. Hmm. Okay, can you speak to that? Because sure. um, there's a perception that if you go to the small person, you're yep. going to pay more. My experience is not that be the yep. case at all yep. if you shop around you yep. can still get a good price absolutely so um, being in that buying group as a member we bought in as a member so that there's six thousand nationwide so they, they pool our money to buy the product right. at, at a, a lower cost um, and that's essentially what the box stores do you know they're, they're so huge they're national mm -hmm. they sure. can buy in real mm -hmm. real cheap so um, we actually they, my buying group, uh, Brand Source, controls that co cost for me so I can offer my customers a better cost. Hmm. That's better great. Price. You know, so. it's the first time I've heard of that um, anywhere outside of, you know, healthcare businesses yep. with pool and that type of thing. I've yep. never heard of it in this retail environment. Yep. That's, that's a great, um, yeah. yeah, because you have to find some mechanism to compete. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, because if, uh, if we had to pay uh, premium prices is no yeah. way, you know, right. Home Depot is only right up the street. So right. I'm not sure if I could even say that, but only right up the street. And, um, I believe that. <laughs> no. uh, you know, this allows me to compete with the, with yeah. the box stores, which is uh, which is really good for me. That's awesome. So, good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the second equation is always you find you find a, an appliance that you like. Yep. Somewhere down the road, you're going to have a, a, a service. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. A matter of service, excuse yep. me. 
So e as easy as following up with you if somebody purchases here, or need we, they not purchase from you? No, you can you can still call us um, if you didn't purchase it here. Um, it depends on what the product is sure. and if it's still under manufacturer warranty. Mm -hmm. If it's something that we sell, we can do it. We can do it under warranty. Mm -hmm. um, we actually have extended warranty programs that we can sell to you, and all you have to do is call into the store and um, arrange an appointment. We can come out and take care of it. Mm -hmm. If uh, if it's out of warranty, we service it as well um, at a very fair cost. So you have no limitation of who you can service once out of warranty. That's right. Okay. And it's right. not just the brands either because yeah. I actually just called them last week. They're at my house on Thursday yeah. um, because my dryer is squeaking and my dryer is a Frigidaire, yeah. which you don't sell but you do yeah. service. Exactly. And they. They were out quickly and actually just got a call as I was driving here that the parts in and they wanted to schedule my yeah. my repair. So yeah. so oh, we try great. we That's try to make it as, as easy as we can for yeah. people. Um, we understand that it's an inconvenience once you're without your appliance. Mm. So we try to do things as quickly as we can. And if we can't fix it, then we can now you know get you into the new one. Yep. So and you were really honest with me too because I asked you a million <laughs> questions because I really yeah. did want a new one. <laughs> and, and then you set me straight on what it was going to cost me to get a new one yep. and then I was like well I don't want a dryer without a washer because I like things to match yep. and then you were just like I think you should fix this <laughs> it's probably going to be better off and yep. so yep. I thought that was nice the honesty you weren't just in it to sell me a new appliance yeah Thanks. you were being very fair I appreciate that thank you so oh uh, oh. oh okay I've got the other so we're going to take another break and uh, and then when we come back from that we're going to be moving around the uh, store a little bit to show you some of um, the options here Stay tuned. Uh, we're back again. Um, Steve Maynard uh, at Shrewsbury uh, Center Appliances and or Appliance Center, whichever. So Steve, tell us a little bit about, uh, show the folks at home what well, you're doing here. Well, here we have here. our uh, GE profile line. Um, it's a new line that mm -hmm. was just released, has uh, some of their mod more modern features. Um, features a full touch glass uh, control on their new uh, cooking products. Um, this is it, beautiful. That, that's all in, that's all in yeah. gas. That's a, that's mm -hmm. called a slide in range, mm. which gives it that built in look. Um, this is a profile refrigerator from GE, um, which this has is a nice detail, so you don't get any crap yep. down there. Yeah, yeah. So that would be nice. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, we leave the edging so people get to see it without exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, but it and fits right in, and you don't get all the junk. Oh, no problems. Mm. Very nice. Yep. Um, the, this is a GE Profile uh, refrigerator. Um, this is, has full ice and water, and what's nice about this is it's got the ice maker that's hidden inside the door. So it gives you some more space uh, for storage in the refrigerator section, yeah. as well as ice, uh, uh, excuse me, water uh, dispenser through the front. So can you open that up though if you yep. wanted more ice on the inside? If you want more ice, you can actually open this bin. This opens right up and you can take the bin out and empty the ice and then uh, put it back in, it'll make more ice. Uh, what's nice about the, the the higher end profile series is it's got a dual cooling zone, which keeps both compartments totally separate. Where in a traditional refrigerator, they share air. These are two oh. completely mm. separate mm. zones. So your freezer is never going to share air with your refrigerator, and your refriger refrigerator is never going to share with your freezer. And I bet that also takes care of the problem with like onions in the refrigerator exactly. and you yep. take ice out and exactly. gee, it tastes great Definitely. like onions. That type of problem. Exactly. That's yep. great. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And then over here we, uh, we show um, the sleek looking uh, profile microwave, uh, which ma matches this uh, gas cooktop. And then uh, their number one selling dishwasher, which is very quiet and it has the, uh, it does not have a third rack, but it has uh, the bottle jets. Um, so if you have kids that are playing sports or you have a baby, uh, a friend of mine just, just installed one of these. He just had a, mm. a newborn and it's for the, you know, you can put the bottles right in there, it gets, gets in there and, and cleans them up nice uh, so you don't have to worry about anything being left behind. That's great. We were just saying when we took that break, it's like, you know, you know we, sh we shouldn't come here and see the latest features. Yeah. So I'm going to go home. No, My husband's going to go, so don't, don't do those shit at home. Yeah. <laughs> right. uh, that's great. Am I correct in believing that every dishwasher out there other than a commercial? It, that's the traditional national size right there. It fits yes. in everywhere. Yep, 24 inches wide by 24 inches deep. Mm -hmm. Same with most really? refrigerators or some uh, of them no. wider? No, no. So, you, so you have different uh, widths in refrigerators. Uh, it's usually 30 inches, 33, and 36. Oh. 36 is, is more the standard, although kitchens are getting smaller and tighter nowadays, and they're starting to make the French doors in, in smaller are they? styles. Yeah, smaller uh, models. Um, this one is also counter depth, so you get the built-in look. So you're not going to see the, the actual right. box uh, sticking out on the side. This is 
gives you that built-in look. So what are the trends? Um, so I still, still see a lot of stainless steel. Um, is stainless that, you steel. That changing or is that stainless steel by far is the most popular. Still, yeah. um, after that now, what's come out is black stainless. So it's going to give you oh, a little, yes. bit, a little bit yes. darker of a finish, but uh -huh. it is stainless. Uh -huh. Um, white and black are kind of fading out, although yeah. we can still get many models in that, mm -hmm. but it kind of limits you to the options. Yeah. Um, we get that asked, people ask us that all the time, but if you're gonna go ahead and do a new kitchen and you wanna change one appliance, you're best off going with stainless steel because it's all gonna, everything's gonna change you know, with the stainless steel or the black stainless. Yeah. What were those classics? Avocado? Avocado and Harvest orange. Gold. Harvest, Harvest Gold. Gold. Where I grew up with Harvest, Harvest Gold. Gold. Yes, I haven't yeah. seen those for a while. <laughs> those those were back. the early 70s. Yes. That's great. Yes. No, let's not bring that back. <laughs> so, does every new kitchen generally, obviously, washer, dishwasher, refrigerator, cooktop, stove, does yep. everybody get a microwave today? Um, not always. Sometimes you have a hood. Okay. So, an exhaust hood. And there's different mm -hmm. styles of that as well. Um, you know, you can get one that is installed underneath your cabinetry. You can get one that is built onto the wall. It depends what you're looking for. Uh, we sell those. I actually, if there's something you can't find in store, we do have a nice website, uh, ShrewsburyAppliancecenter.com, where you can find um, everything that we sell. Um, if you all, if you have any questions, you certainly can stop down the showroom or you can give us a call. Now, I also want to want to ask because I, I see here that you've got. Um, Cabin, kitchen cabinetry. Do you yeah. do that as well? We don't, but we work real close with a, with a contractor. Okay. Uh, he's actually a good friend of mine, and he does all these beautiful kitchens. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as you can see, we have uh, the empty area over here, which we're going to expand. Mm -hmm. We have some room to grow over here. We're going to try to bring in a live kitchen so people can actually come in and maybe use some of the stuff to see you know, how it cooks or how it washes and stuff. So we're going to try to make that oh, live. Oh, that's neat. So, oh. oh, you'll have to let us know when that happens. Absolutely. We'll that. Sure. <laughs> So, uh, so I'm not sure how we're doing on time, but um, any any other particular um, well, we're, we're or, excited. Or brands you'd we're, like to something that turns over a lot uh, for us um, is our dishwashers, especially mm. in Shrewsbury. Um, That's back there, right? So yeah, you know, I'll walk you with that display. We're excited to be able to offer uh, a full line um, of different brands, um, but there's a, there's a price point for everybody in our dishwashers and. Um, some of the nicer dishwashers that we sell and we're proud to offer are KitchenAid. Uh, it's their niche. They've been doing it a long time. And uh, we do sell a lot of the KitchenAid dishwashers to our customers and we don't have any complaints. Mm -hmm. um, and we offer that, that full line. So and we're happy to say that we can do that. What's the best interior if you have a high water? The best interior always is a stainless steel interior. If you go with a plastic interior, you just run the risk that it's going to warp and it's going to it's going to retain stains over time. Mm -hmm. uh, stainless steel is not going to do that. It's going to help dry better as well. Um, so yeah, if you're going to buy a new dishwasher, um, you should you, you you want to spend the money and go with a stainless steel interior. Now, which is the quietest you offer? Quietest are a lot of the kitchen aids. Uh, although GE uh, does have some very quiet dishwashers, but the kitchen aid stuff, they are kind of ahead of the curve and their stuff is very quiet. Um, what's nice about them is they have a pro dry and a pro wash option. Uh, the best drying dish dishwashers in the industry are the KitchenAid dishwashers. Now how is it they're, they're quiet? A ton of insulation? Or just no, they no what they noise. did is they made the pumps more, way more efficient. Okay. You'll find that if you buy a new dishwasher they're going to run a lot longer than you're used to. Yeah. But that's because uh, the pump has to do a little more work but it's efficient. So it's going to use less water, and it's going to, but it's going to um, have to run a little longer to do what it has to do uh, to clean your dishes. But it's going to be a lot quieter in the long run. Is that the black stainless over there? Yes. Is that what that is? Yeah. Oh yeah. This is so an example. So, so it's black stainless. Yep, and it's fingerprint resistant. But it's not magnetic. Uh, I don't believe so. I haven't stuck a magnet on it yet, but uh, most of the stainless that's stuff beautiful. that we sell is not. That's beautiful. I think that's the first time I've ever seen black stainless. So, and uh, Whirlpool has just launched their new line. GE will be launching theirs coming out um, later on in the fall. Um, but uh, Whirlpool is is kind of ahead the head of the curve there with uh, with launching the black stainless. KitchenAid is uh, is also getting into that as well, and that's becoming more and more popular. Is that top drawer a freezer or a refrigerator? This is refrigeration, although there are models out there where you can get them as a freezer or you can get dual drawers. Um, yep, the, kid, the kids love to put the yogurts, uh, fruits, vegetables. Um, the dads like to put their uh, wobbly pops in there. <laughs> Beautiful. 
That's awesome. That's really nice. I see a griddle option behind you on that. Yeah, this is this is a model from KitchenAid. Has um, an oval burner. Oh, excuse me. It doesn't have an oval burner. Some of them do. Uh, but this has a griddle feature. Uh, allows you to do some some eggs or, or whatever you would do, French toast and stuff on a griddle. As opposed to mine that wobbles everywhere. Yeah. You yeah. know, because it's not. Yeah. One of the nice yeah. things about gas too, and. Uh, yeah. and uh, now, can you put those in the dishwasher, or should you not? The racks. Uh, the grates, you have to read the manual carefully, because some of them are dishwasher safe, some of them aren't. And what will happen is you'll lose the enamel, you'll lose yep. the finish, and you'll ruin the product. So um, you really just have to read your manual, and that will tell you whether it's dishwasher safe or not. Okay, so I just got the, uh, like, two-minute sign, so we're going to wrap up. Any last-minute words? We appreciate the support. Uh, the town has been, it's been great to us so far. Um, as a lifelong resident and everything, uh, we definitely appreciate uh, the community coming down to help us out. Um, it's been a success so far, and we, we look forward to serving many people in the town. And just want to thank you guys for coming down and uh, letting us do this. Well, it's great. We love to be out. Yeah. We love to highlight uh, local businesses, small businesses. So um, thank you for joining us again on Selectman's Roundtable. Again, um, make sure, uh, well, I think, Mark, you'll run the address down at, at the bottom of the screen. So uh, stop by and say hi to Steve. And uh, we'll see you next time on Selectman's Roundtable.